So this is Flip Mini Lecture 37B. And like I said, there's two major topics in this chapter, which is circular motion and uh, simple harmonic motion. Now we're going to jump into simple harmonic motion. So up here I have a mass on a spring. And of course in the vertical direction, there's not much interesting going on here. In the vertical direction, uh, the spring, if it's sliding back and forth along this flat table, it's not doing anything at all in the vertical direction. It's got a constant y value, which means it has a vy equals zero and an ay equals to zero. So the if you had a normal force and a gravitational force, all you'd learn from Newton's second law was that the magnitude of the normal force is equal to mg. Sometimes important for this problem not. Why? One of the reasons it's not important is because we're going to assume this mass is frictionless. That it's not uh, rubbing on the table at all. So for starters here, we're going to have the mass be frictionless. And so then the only thing that's acting on this mass in the x direction, the only force is minus k times x minus x equilibrium. Uh, why is it that? Well, because if I set up a coordinate axis such that this is the positive x direction, and that's the positive y direction, then x minus x equilibrium is how much the spring has been stretched past its equilibrium point. And if it's been stretched to the right past its equilibrium point, then it's pulling left. And if it's to the left of its equilibrium point, which would mean this was a negative number, when you multiply that negative number by this negative number, you get a positive number, which means that the spring is pushing right. So either way, whether it's to the right, it's extended or compressed, there's the formula for the force supplied by this spring on this mass. Now we can make our lives even easier by choosing our coordinate system so that uh, x equilibrium is zero. So we're going to make the origin of our coordinates be, uh, this is where the spring would like to sit, is right there at the x equals zero line. Okay, so there's the force on the mass. Then the right-hand side of Newton's equation says that's equal to max. Now, a sub x is equal to by definition, the time rate of change of the velocity in the x direction. And the velocity in the x direction is by definition, the time rate of change of the x coordinate. So those are definitions. And we can plug those definitions into here. Let's do that. We got minus kx is equal to max, but max is equal to d by dt of vx. Meanwhile, vx here is equal to dx dt. Now, d by dt of dx dt has a name or a symbol or whatever. If you take d by dt of something that you've already taken d by dt of, you write that as d squared by dt squared of that thing. It's a little weird. There's not really any squaring going on here. That's just two derivatives. Those twos, although they're in the superscript position, they kind of look kind of like squares. It just means you're taking the derivative with respect to time, and then you're taking another derivative with respect to time. So we put that mess in there, this mess in there, and we just learned that minus kx is equal to m d squared x dt squared. Okay, so there is our hard one equation. Minus kx is equal to m d squared x dt squared. And this is an example of a differential equation. Differential equations are notoriously hard to solve. This one, though, is an easy one. And you can even just guess the answer. So let's guess the answer. I'm going to show you. Guess it and show it to you. I'm going to guess x of t is equal to cosine omega t. Okay, well, if that's my guess. I got to take d by dt of it. See what I get. dx dt in that case. Derivative of cos is minus sine. 
Then I got to take the derivative of the inside there, omega derivative of omega t with respect to t. That just gives me an omega. So dx dt is minus omega sine omega t. But I'm supposed to take a second derivative here. So then I need to calculate d squared x dt squared. Now you usually uh, put the minus omega in front so you don't need those parens. So let's do that. We put the minus omega in front. Then I have to take the derivative of that. Derivative of sine is cos. Still have the omega t. Oh, and once again, we have to take d by dt of that. d by t t of omega t is just omega. So I get another factor of omega, which makes this omega squared. So we just learned that d squared x dt squared is equal to minus omega squared cos omega t. Okay. But cos omega t was our original guess for x. So we just learned that d squared x dt squared is minus omega squared x. Aha, uh -huh. which looks awful lot like this. This one said minus kx is equal to m d squared x dt squared. Well, this all works, okay? These two equations 100% agree with each other. d squared x dt squared equals minus omega squared x, and d squared x dt squared is equal to minus kx over m, provided omega squared equals k over m, or provided omega equals root k over m. Okay, so the guess works provided omega is bad. Now let me show you another guess that works. You see that guess that works? That guess also works. You should check it. Check that x of t equals sine omega t works. Do the two derivatives. Find out what condition it is. Surprise, the condition is going to turn out to be the same condition. Okay? So that guess works too. And in fact, I'll tell you something more. x of t equals a cos omega t plus b sine omega t. In other words, absolutely any combination of cos omega t and sine omega t, that also works. Now you might go, oh gosh, that works, but here I got it even another one. Try x of t is equal to a cos omega t plus phi naught. And surprise, surprise, you're going to find that works too. And once again, the only condition is that omega squared is equal to k over m. That condition is satisfied. This works. So here's one thing, though. This one is redundant, okay? This isn't a new guess. This was two great guesses. Good job. This one, which is a very popular way of writing the most general guess, this one is actually redundant. Why? Because there's a trig identity that says that cosine of alpha plus beta is equal to cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. It's a trig identity that says that. And I'm going to put alpha equals omega t and beta equals phi naught into that formula. And then I've got that x of t is equal to cos omega t, still have the a parens, times cos of phi naught minus sine omega t sine of phi naught. Okay, so I get that. And you realize that if I say a cos phi naught, that's just a constant. It doesn't depend on t. A cos phi naught is just some multiplier for cos omega t. Well, that could be this, except instead of a up here, I have a cos phi naught. And meanwhile, this thing right here, this sine phi naught times that a, that could play the role of b. So basically, you can make any 
you can use this guess that x of t is equal to a cos omega t plus phi naught to make any kind of guess like this and vice versa. Those two guesses are redundant. I'll tell you, this one is actually Knight's favorite. This one is the one that he uses the most in the book. So I'll add an extra box around that. And when he writes it this way, he calls this the phase angle. Let me just show you one more thing about this before I, I stop. If I use Knight's form, uh, let's just check something, okay? Let's find out what x of 0 is. So at time t equals 0, I plug into this, and I get that I get a times the cosine. Well, omega t is 0 if, if, if t is 0, so I get a cos phi naught. And if I take dx dt, differentiate that thing, I get minus a omega times cosine omega t plus phi naught. Now, I can plug x t equals 0 into this and see what I get. And I get minus a omega cos phi naught. And this thing, x of 0, that's worth calling x naught. And this thing, dx dt at t equals 0, that's worth calling v naught. So now we have a relationship between x naught, which is a cos phi dot, and v naught, which is minus a omega. Uh, I feel like I see a mistake. Minus a omega sine omega t plus phi minus a omega sine phi naught. And we've just learned that v naught is minus a omega sine phi naught. Sometimes it's useful to, like if you're given these two, to be able to get uh, a and phi naught, or if you're given a and phi naught, to be able to get x naught and v naught. They're just different ways of describing the motion. Okay, that's 37B.